I am Jake. And I'm Marlon. And welcome back to the Movie Buff Reactions channel. Today we're going to be reacting to someone we haven't reacted to for many months. The Nostalgia Critic. As well as uh, Linkara. Today we'll be reacting to the first uh, crossover review that Doug Walker and Louis Lovehog ever did. Way back in, according to what I've read, October of 2009. This is their joint review of Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Considered by many, and anybody with half a brain these days, the worst Superman movie of all time, unless you're a purist who thinks Man of Steel was the worst. And we have seen this movie, uh, I saw it many times when I was younger, and showed it to you a while back. Yeah. What do you remember about it? It just seemed to be lost from the rest of the story, uh, the previous storylines that I'd seen. So. And uh, Christopher Reeve only did it because Canon, the company that was now making the Superman movies, so that they'd fund his passion project, Street Smart, which is actually not that bad of a film. So, without further ado, let's watch. used to be a running trend. Oh, I, uh, Somebody was sure out what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing here. Well, see, the, 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 the thing is that I review comic books and, and you <laughs> review movies and, and, and I figured if I was going to review a comic book movie, yeah, I'll just uh, quit right here. No, no you <laughs> don't. You start this dumbass review, we're going to finish it. But first, get out of those clothes! <laughs> what the? How did you? Ah, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Ship in the 
first movie, didn't he? You know, if you're gonna pick apart all the plot holes, we're gonna be here all day. Point taken. That's what no, they do. No, actually, this little crystal is meant to be our deus ex machina for later. Oh, good! I can't wait to be pleasantly disappointed. Since apparently the writers felt that the impending nuclear war wasn't a strong enough story, we have a series of subplots littered throughout the movie. Most of them go absolutely nowhere, a result of the fact that when the film was first released, more than 40 minutes were cut from it. Although, based on some of the information on the film that's been collected, they didn't go anywhere in the first cut either. So I guess their loss is our So game. we got a 90 minute Superman movie. The Daily Planet has been taken over by an evil Rupert Murdoch stand-in, which isn't really that far off from the real Rupert Murdoch. Tedious. Don't tell me you only read the pictures. What I have here are some mock copies of our new layout. Isn't that headline uh, irresponsible? Maybe, but it'll sell a hell of a lot of newspapers. Now make an unethical entertainment channel and a conservative news channel to point out what's wrong with it. <laughs> he appoints his daughter, Lacey, as the new publisher. The Daily Planet hasn't made any money in three years. And the name of the game is making money. A mainstream news source more interested in making money above reasonable reporting? That's just unbelievable and unrealistic. So it turns out Lacey immediately starts falling in love for Clark. For some reason. Gotta be the glasses. Oh yeah. <laughs> but then, the President of the United States makes a chilling announcement. And because the summit has failed, we have no choice but to strive to be second to none in the nuclear arms race. But wait! Another subplot manages to sneak its way in. A teacher tries to console her elementary school students about this horrible brewing crisis. Now I know you're all upset by the crisis. No, we're upset because they canceled Power Rangers. I just hit puberty and now there's no Kimberly. <laughs> the best thing we can do is to try to think positively. Now, now, is there anything you can do? Doesn't anyone have a suggestion? All right. I'll make a suggestion. I mean, isn't this just how you spent your classes back in the day? I mean, it's not like you did math or science or anything. Jeremy. Or horticulture. What do you think we can do about the crisis? I tell you, I'd write a letter to that would do some good. Motherfucker. <laughs> Superman. Yes. I can't tell that kid was dubbed or not. Point in this movie. The kid writes a letter for Superman to be delivered via Lois Lane. She shows it to Clark Kent, and thus, somehow, this sends Superman into an existential dilemma about what he should do. He even goes to the Fortress of Solitude to consult the Elders of Krypton on this. The Earth is too primitive. You can flee to new worlds. I know I'm forbidden to interfere. Not that that stopped me in the last three movies. <laughs> if you teach the Earth to put its faith in any one man, even yourself, you're teaching them to be betrayed. Betrayed, 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 betrayed. Oh, did I forget to mention betrayed? Betrayed! <laughs> but Clark Kent's continual moping about the issue doesn't end there, because now we have a scene of Clark and Lois meeting up and ripping off the first flying scene from the original movie. And I don't mean copy it, I mean note for note the friggin' same. But before we can get to that horseshit, they walk off the edge of Clark's patio. What, you've never been? Clark? Clark? <laughs> I'd just like to kill you now, Lois. <laughs> and now quite possibly the worst green screen effect you've ever seen in your entire life in three, two, one. Clark! Clark! Wow. Very bad. Look at that background. It's like we got transported into the Flintstones. Sometimes I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Don't do the right thing, no matter what it is you always have. Oh, then they rip off the magic memory erasing kiss from the end of the second movie, too. Well, you've got to give the series credit for consistency. It's just as idiotic here as it was there. So Superman makes his decision and goes to the United Nations building, which is now in Metropolis. Interesting relocation. Jeremy and Superman walk into the United Nations to together. So I suppose this is as good a time as any to say goodbye to little Jeremy, since this is pretty much the last love or see of him in this movie. Goodbye! Goodbye! Goodbye, Jeremy! So goodbye! <laughs> I'm sorry you'll never act in another movie again. Enjoy your mental scars. <laughs> Come on, it's not like he was uh, in the oh, career of Jake God, Lloyd. This scene. What? What's the matter? Just watch. For many years now, I've lived among you as a, a visitor. As of today, I'm not a visitor anymore. 
But I can't stand idly by and watch us stumble into the madness of possible nuclear destruction. And so I've come to a decision. Effective immediately, I'm going to rid our planet of all nuclear weapons. <laughs> just say he's going to rid the world of nuclear weapons by itself, whether the governments are unwilling to or not? Mm-hmm. And everyone's okay with this? They are, critic. Which means that it's time to play International Politics! <laughs> all right, nostalgia critic, your Israel, a country surrounded on all sides by enemies... 2009. through yeah, before it could go through. <laughs> and everything. Surprised the sun didn't just push it out of its vagina. 
This guy never appeared in a movie before or after Superman 4. When you think Superman's greatest enemy, you think Lee press on nails. Oh my god, sister, did you get into a fight with Superman with those things? So yeah, our evil nuclear man is basically just Fabio with a mullet and laryngitis. Destroy Superman now. <laughs> but enough of the super villain, it's time for some comedy! Lacey and Clark are working out together. Um, wasn't there an impending nuclear war just on the horizon? Come to think of it, why was the war about to happen? <sighs> because the summit failed. Summits fail all the time, that doesn't guarantee war. We don't take kindly to logic in these here parts, boy. Now we get back to watching Clark Kent act like an idiot. <laughs> but wait, we also have to have some goofy antics as she makes a date with Clark at the same time that Lois is having an interview with Superman. I get a feeling hijinks will ensue. I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, this is a really dumb part. An already really retarded movie. Just doesn't seem super nice. <laughs> we cut to Lex Luthor where he's. What the hell? He's dancing with a woman in Victorian dress. And then she just leaves without anyone mentioning her again. It was originally so conceived by Lindsay Ellis. Who is oddly enough voiced by Gene Hackman. You have my voice. No. You have my voice. Which means... Nothing? Yeah, yeah. So the nuclear man walks into the apartment and then I guess his batteries die. Still going. Nothing outlasts <laughs> the Energizer battery. No, it turns out nuclear man is powered by the sun. He's a solar-powered nuclear menace. Well, at least he's a great villain. And in case anyone's <laughs> wondering, yes, there's about a hundred scenes where he's clearly not in direct sunlight, and yet he's fine. <laughs> Don't you just hate inconsistencies? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're not done ripping off the rest of the movies because Lex Luthor contacts Superman, somehow knowing where he is, and threatens him into a confrontation. After some banter between the two, Superman is introduced to Nuclear Man. To a nice guy who's about to finish last. <laughs> Nuclear man just belch? I mean, what was that? <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? See, I just had this wonderful image in my head of Gene Hackman in a recording studio having to do like 30 takes of that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. After more drawn out dialogue, we finally have the two starting to fight. And boy, is it a letdown. They don't even really punch each other. They just struggle for a while and throw out some really awkward blue screen effects. <laughs> so they fly all over the world to fight. They fly over Italy where Nuclear Man unleashes a volcano upon the citizens, but Superman blows it up. Uh, okay. Speaks the tone, huh? Well, he's Superman. Then travel to China, where Nuclear Man blows this up the scene. Great Wall. But fortunately, Superman is there to go all Gumby on our asses. <laughs> Does Superman have wall repairing ability? Not in any comic I've read. Stop motion powers. To finish off, Nuclear Man takes the Statue of Liberty and tries to drop it into the city. But luckily, Superman. This still the statue Metropolis? Do they have the statue now, or are they actually in New York? Because New York exists in this universe. It leaves him open to an attack by Nuclear Man, who just kind of scratches him once. Oh, I got nail polish on my neck. Power's fading! This somehow makes Superman sick and age rapidly. However, he thankfully has that glowing deus ex machina from earlier. We have no idea what the hell it really is, or why it's never mentioned until now, but it heals Superman. And he kind of used it in the second film. Does, we never see it heal him. So we can have another drawn out fight with Nuclear Man. Yay! Because we haven't seen enough of that yet! So Nuclear Man suddenly falls in love with Lacey. Don't ask, you should. The delayed scene supposedly explains it. The city to kidnap her. Yeah, because.
because it was so cool the first time you did it. Where is the woman? Give it up, you'll never find her. Look out! He's going nuclear! <laughs> oh, boy, but the humor in this is really that much better. Stop! Don't do it! The people! Don't let well, me yell at you so Stop far. him. So Nuclear Man blows up some product placement, makes the film reverse, and Superman just stands there until he caves in and tells him where Lazy is. He tricks him into an elevator, then flies it up and drops him off on the moon. However, a sliver of light goes into the elevator recharging him. After Superman fixes the most unconvincing America. Flight, they have an irritatingly long slow motion fight. <laughs> In higher quality, you can see the bat the black backdrop that's supposed to be space is actually a curtain. <laughs> so patient. aspects of the movie that they didn't like and presenting them. <laughs> Very straightforward. This sucks, this sucks, this sucks. Doesn't make sense. But they were very funny doing it. The opening bit, uh, that was something that I think maybe one or two other people did, or Doug, or other reviewers have done in crossovers, where one pretends to be the other, then the real uh, person they're imitating comes in, they bicker and then they do the review. And why not? It was funny. Yeah. The few, the few times they did it. Well done. And if they did it before, then they get some practice at it. I remember showing this review to a former friend many years ago. Mm -hmm. And when it opened, showing 
Lewis doing the Nostalgia Critic, he thought Lewis was Doug just a lot younger <laughs> and heavier. <laughs> Well, actually, in, in back in, back in the day, there when this was shot, Lewis was not as um, complete a man as he is now. He's still a little pudgy, but not as big as he is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he was young. I believe he was like 22 at the time. Yes. And uh, Doug, um, I think he was uh, around 28 or 29. Mm -hmm. This was uh, the first solo crossover between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Thinking back, I believe they did um, Alone in the Dark, the Uwe Boll movie with Spoonie. Yeah, the three of them. Yeah, but this was the first one where it's just the two of them. Got it. And uh, a few years later, they also did um, Star Trek Ins Insurrection for Doug's Star Trek Month in yeah. 2012. And then they re reteamed with Spoonie to review Uwe Boll's Blood Rain. And a few years ago, and what I believe was the final crossover they did before Lewis left Channel Awesome, mm -hmm. was um, they reviewed the comic book adaptation of Tim Burton's Batman on a top the fourth wall, mm -hmm. Lewis's show. That's interesting to get Lewis on because he's got the, the comic book background. Mm -hmm. And so he's... Uh, uh, more learned in what is offensive to the, the, the character's history and what is, you know, on and on and on. Yeah. But, and also, the, the two of them, they, the way the thing was written and, and edited and everything, they worked well off of each other. Especially well considering they're clearly in their own locations. Yes. Doug in Illinois and Lewis in uh, Minnesota, I believe. Yes. Yes, he's he's uh, out of Minnesota. I'm not sure exactly where, but he probably doesn't want everybody to know. Were you distracted by the frog that's on the window across from us? Actually, I was. I was quite different. What is that crawling up the window? <laughs> There's a frog across from us. Uh, I'll leave this in just because it's funny. And, uh, yeah, I love the reveal. I love them working off each other. And uh, the shooting of the gun. And we don't take too kindly to logic. Yeah. Yeah. And the part where Linkara is like, let's play international politics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good, yes. Yeah. As yeah. Doug put it in a commentary, I believe, uh, Lewis wrote that whole section of the review, because uh, apparently he knows more about that than Doug does. Yes, and it, it sounded a lot more like Lewis than Doug. I mean, Doug is very good when he blew his brains out right there in front of us. <laughs> Doug isn't just limited to that kind of thing, but he's very good at that sort of stuff. Lewis is well known when he does his comic book reviews for imitating the voices of the characters, like when he's reading it. Mm -hmm. And well, there's not much of that here. When he has to do a funny voice, like when he pretends he's filing his nails, that was funny. And as he said, clean throat. <laughs> nice touch. <laughs> Small touches throughout. Very good. One thing that I, I noticed that was interesting was the part with Lex Luthor. Like, they don't get into that until about ten more minutes into the review. Mm -hmm. In the movie, the stuff with Lex Luthor happens pretty early in the film and goes simultaneously. And I've noticed this with a few reviews they do, particularly... Um, stuff that he's done with Lewis or Spoonie. Right. Um, they will save certain chunks of the film for later in the review so they can get uh, certain parts out first. Oh, okay. Just talk about them first. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Also, the music choices uh, were funny. Some, they had some good humor with that, too. I can't even... Yeah, the <laughs> music during the On a Date with One, On a Date with the Other. Yeah. And... Uh, the uh, 2001 Space Odyssey mm -hmm. music playing during the battle, right. the ballet, so whatever. Any thoughts to add on Superman 4, the movie? Well, I think Doug summed it up pretty well in the beginning. It's, it, this is Golan Globus. Put out a cheap movie, same guy doing it. Here's some money, we'll support your charity, and, and that's the way they uh, went, went about things. And... Uh, the thing with, Successfully, I think. 
The thing with Golden Globus is they did put out some good movies. Just they also put out a lot of so bad they're good and just so bad they're yeah. shit as well. Like, um, they're the company that pretty much made Charles Bronson an icon of the 80s, mm -hmm. made Chuck Norris an action hero. Right. And, like I said, Christopher Reeve only really agreed to do this because he uh, wanted to make Street Smart. Yeah. And that was really, that was a really good one. And you guys, it was the first film where Morgan Freeman got nominated for an Oscar <laughs> as the pimp Fast Black. And John Cryer as Lenny Luther mm -hmm. is probably the worst uh, role I've ever seen John Cryer in. Just uh, the way he acts. I don't know. They say it all comes from the direction, but I can't imagine what direction they gave him. He just comes off like um, either a stoned or mentally retarded person yeah, and yeah. just goes for a weird... Uh, flamboyant 80s yeah. gimmick. Just uh, weirdness with very shallow weird, weirdness, no, no, nothing behind it, yeah. And uh, it's funny because John Cryer currently plays Lex Luthor on TV, on the Supergirl TV show, yeah. and there's people that say they think he's even better than Gene Hackman. Well, okay. <laughs> the one thing about this movie that I think uh, kind of elevates it above being a completely shit film is Gene Hackman. I mean, Christopher Reeve, he's Christopher Reeve, but they really, uh, they did not write the Superman character well in this. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene Hackman, he's one of those actors where even if he's in a bad movie, he gives it a little bit of class. Yeah, that is that is what he does. He he has never, to the extent that I know, done a bad role. Bad movie, but not bad role. Even a bad script, he he makes the he makes the the character better than it would have been if he hadn't been doing it. He does that all the time. And one thing about Christopher Reeve's um, character in this that I did like. Um, Superman, I think they just made him into an overly preachy, anti-nuclear, propaganda character in this. But um, the one thing I kind of liked was with the Clark Kent persona. Mm -hmm. I liked how they made Clark not quite as awkward and as nerdy as he was before. I mean, I know that's kind of the personality he's supposed to have. Yeah. But I like how we get a few scenes where he acts a little more... Um, relatable in that persona mm -hmm. and the idea that there'd be a character that was like the lacy character the idea that there'd be a character who was attracted to him interested in him as Clark Kent instead of Superman I did think was interesting but once again they didn't develop it enough and didn't really go nowhere after saving um, the uh, non-air needing Lacey uh, she just kind of disappears, and there was a deleted scene where they said goodbye, but it's deleted. So, goodbye, Liz Lacey. <laughs> last thing I'll say, last thing I swear, Margot Kidder as Lois Lane, I still hate her. I mean, I know she's dead, but I always hated this version of the character. Amy Adams, best Lois Lane I've ever seen, and... Great Wall of China, brick laying power. I got nothing more to say than that. Just what? Hope you enjoyed this reaction. Give it a like if you liked it, and if you are interested, check out the other videos here on the channel. And if you like those, maybe subscribe. I'm Jake. I'm Marlon. And we will hopefully see you again soon. Soon.